it's just so important to see the shock on the men's faces, like to register how much they don't know this about women. For women, you can't separate safety and sexuality. I asked women, what, what's romantic to you? What do men do that's romantic? And I asked women, what do men do that makes you feel safe? And the answers were the same. There's all these things that we think are out of our control, right? Like we think mm -hmm. chemistry is out of our control, ours mm -hmm. for them, theirs for ours. No, love is out of our control. It happens or it doesn't. No, your brain's going to filter. You can have your brain filter what will cause you to have bigger feelings of love. Welcome. I'm Alyssa Nobriga, your host of the Healing and Human Potential podcast a place for you to discover the multidimensionality of what it means to be human. Over the past 20 years, I've trained thousands of coaches in my methodology, leveraging my experience as a former psychotherapist, and I'm here to share with you all the wisdom and insights that I've learned along the way. Each week, I'll share with you life-changing tools to support you in awakening and manifesting your dream life from the inside out. We'll be exploring the intersection between ancient wisdom and modern everyday life, really diving deep into the art of human potential through the lens of psychology, spirituality, and coaching. Let's let the magic unfold. There's no denying that one of the keys to having a successful relationship is communication. So then why do so many people struggle with this? Have you ever considered that the communication styles and patterns and your own emotional needs and others may be vastly different? And perhaps the reason that why we disconnect in our communication is because we may be assuming or expecting others to think and feel the same exact way that we do. Well, in this episode today, I'm bringing you Alison Armstrong, who has spent over 30 years studying the dynamics of relationships based on biological gendered communication. And she shares why human instincts compel people to behave in ways that contradict and undermine their own goals, values, and needs. And in today's episode, Alison and I explore why we behave certain ways, how to understand Understand and appreciate our differences. And so I hope this conversation serves you in creating more harmonious relationships. I am so happy to have you and to share you with my audience. I wanted to kick us off and start with one thing that I thought was fascinating that you and your team discovered, which was that a man can tell if it's his woman or not within 30 seconds. Can you share with us a little of the background, why this is and what's behind that? What they have told me is first they started saying within three minutes mm -hmm. and then they're like, no, really, it's about 30 seconds that they can tell what a woman could be for them. Okay. So in that 30 seconds, they know, is this a like maybe a colleague? Could this be a friend? Could mm. this be a mentor? Could this okay. be a hookup? Could this be... <laughs> <laughs> or, uh-oh, this could be her. <laughs> mm -hmm. This could be her. Mm -hmm. And, but unlike many women who, if we had that reaction, we would get attached. Oh my God, mm -hmm. he's the one. And then our brain would screen out all the evidence that he's not. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Men's minds don't work that way they um they're like okay so that who she could be that would be the edge pieces of the puzzle and now we've got to see do the other pieces fill in and like in our understanding love and commitment course we talk about the 12 things that make a woman the right person for him to marry to commit to and there's 12 things they're paying attention to. That's common, 12 things that men are looking at. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. <laughs> and, I would love and to hear one of, the, one of the biggest is um, he's got to find out, one, can he get what he needs from her? So can he mm -hmm. get enough of what he needs from her? And mm -hmm. this is why I tell women all the time, if you're serious about coupling, not everybody's ready to partner, but if you're serious about coupling, you got to clear space because mm. if, if a man can't get a date with you for six weeks <laughs> or even <laughs> two or three weeks, he knows she doesn't have enough time 
for me to mm-hmm. get what I would need from her for me to, because men, men tend to want a department store. <laughs> they don't <laughs> want to go to a series of strip malls to follow, to find what they need. They want a department store. So they're uh-huh. looking for someone who can pay them attention, encourage them, um, admire them, be their lover, be their friend, be, mm. nurture them, be able to mm. snuggle up in front of the TV and say nothing, but just mm. be comforted by the warmth of her body next to them. They're looking for all these things they need from women, and they they want a department store. They want one woman <laughs> who they can go to the different departments as they need, and and so. So that's one of the 12 things is that he can get enough of what he needs from her. Um, Mm. And which means it's really important for us to find out what they need. Mm -hmm. And and so we have to listen differently to them. And then we have to ask, like, like when I was, when my boyfriend and I were first learning each other, you know, I would, I would hear something and I would like, so do you need that? (laughs) Uh Hmm. Sometimes he'd say, I don't know. And sometimes he'd say, yes, I do. And it's like, Mm. okay, all right, good. So if Mm. you don't know, let's watch that. Just see if it ends up tipping in the direction of you do need that. And then the Mm. things that he's like, yes, I do. I'm like, okay, let's see if I can reach far enough to give you that. And Mm -hmm. um, because we're, we're, we're a lot alike, but we're also really different, right? And mm-hmm. he and I, and just people in general. So, mm-hmm. so he's looking, can he get enough of what he needs from her? But he's also one of the other things that makes someone the right person. And this is a tricky one, Alyssa, that he thinks he can give her what he thinks she needs. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. So it's not mm-hmm. only can he get from her what he needs, can he give to her what she needs? Because he needs to be able You're to needed. give her what she needs. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, okay. his experience is I can't win. Uh, if I can't give her what she needs, not only can't I ever win, it would be dishonorable to try okay. to keep her when yeah. I know I can't give her what she needs. Yeah. And, this, and I'm thinking about women that are complaining or never satisfied, like how deflating then that would be for a man to not be able to give her what she needs. Yes. And how they usually speak about it is you deserve what you need and I can't provide it. Mm. And, mm. um, but this thing about this wording, Alyssa, if I may, yeah. what he Thinks, he thinks he can give her what he thinks she needs. And that's mm-hmm. one of the things that gets women in the most trouble is that we don't know how a man decides what a woman needs. Okay. And so, so we're not listening close enough to sort it out. Mm-hmm. So, so first of all, and the older they get, the more decisions they've made. They have made decisions about what they think all women need. <laughs> okay. <laughs> decided all women need to shop. All women yeah. need too many clothes, lots and lots of clothes, right? Uh-huh. They, like they just decide this stuff, right? Uh-huh. But that may not be true for us. We're not all the same, right? Yeah. Um, and they, so they decide what all women need. And then they also think that women need what men need. So, mm-hmm. for example, for almost all men to experience the release, which is one of the things they're looking for in sex, they mm-hmm. need to climax. So mm-hmm. they project that need onto women and they will keep us awake until the wee hours of the morning <laughs> in order to produce that result. And like, I am pro choice orgasms. Like, ask her, do you mean to want that this time? Because she may, she knows her body better. Like, mm-hmm. no, uh, she, you know, however she refers to her own anatomy, you know, yeah. she's underground, yeah. she's not coming out. This is just about having fun. Don't even <laughs> try to work that hard. And, and I, I told Dennis 
Prager, who loves to talk about sex, men could have more sex if women could have fewer orgasms. And mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. on his radio show, I could only say climax. I was not allowed to say orgasms, which is okay. interesting. And yeah. Um, yeah, so the pressure to have an orgasm can make an invitation for sex seem like, I got to go to work now. <laughs> it's, it's the end of my day and I got to work on that so you can feel validated in your prowess. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I just play, yeah. right? Yeah. And, but then, so it's, you know, so there's what they think all women need. And then there's what that they think we need, what they need. And then they think we need what we have. So I remember I talked to a group of men about this, their jaws dropped. (laughs) So they calculate, they look at what we have. They look at the car we drive, the house we live in, the clothes we wear, the trips we take, the vacations, the travel. They look at our, whatever our hobbies are. We might have expenses, what the horses, the skiing, the, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and they add it all up to ascertain, can I afford her? Uh, yeah. And mm-hmm. when I told them, you know, women have a lot of things they don't need and they certainly don't need another one of those. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't mm-hmm. need you to pay my mortgage. I don't need mm-hmm. you to buy me another <laughs> car like the one uh-huh. I have. I don't uh-huh. No, I need to be held. I need to be touched. I need to be loved. I need to be liked for just the way that I am. Um, mm-hmm. I need you to I need you to be happy to be with me, maybe even proud to be with me. I need, you know, I need to be listened to. I need to be talked to. I need, right? Yeah. There's all these mm-hmm. things that you cannot measure in money. <laughs> and yeah. that they will add up. Can I afford that? And mm-hmm. and then the other thing they do is they listen to what we talk about. And they assume that not only what we have, we need, but what we've had. So it's one of the things I tell my, my singles all the time. If you're restoring yourself, if you're healing yourself, if you're mm-hmm. being restored from injury and shame and disempowering conclusions, then your mm-hmm. past should be the least important thing to connect over. But most yeah. people dating, it's the safest thing to connect over is the past. Mm-hmm. But women don't mm-hmm. know that men are listening. So if you're talking about all your travel, they assume that what you've had, you want to have. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. perfect example of this, her name is Jamie Myers. She does amazing work. She used to be one of our workshop leaders um, when she was dating um, her later to be husband, and they were uh, driving to her parents' house to meet her parents for the first time. And on the way there, Jamie said to Seth, I need you to know that I don't need what my father has given my mother. I don't oh. need that. And mm. I've been to her parents' house <laughs> when, they, when they lived in Northern California. It it was literally a castle. I mean, uh-huh. it had turrets. It had a fireplace that I could have stood in with friends. <laughs> <laughs> and and Seth told her later that if she hadn't told him that, it would have mm-hmm. been over because mm-hmm. he knew he'd be never be able to give her that. Like his plan for his life was not going to produce what it would take to pay for that. But she let him know ahead of time. I don't need that. And like men will be anxious to see your home. Like if they really think you could, you could be her, right? Like Mm -hmm. they, Mm -hmm. they know our homes belong to us. (laughs) And so Mm -hmm. am I comfortable in her home? (laughs) Could I feel at home Mm -hmm. in her home? Mm -hmm. But Mm -hmm. some people have to say, okay, I'll let you come to my house but not if you try to calculate the mortgage and think that you're supposed to pay for it, because I yeah. am not looking for that in a man. And if you go down that path, this will yeah. be over. And that will be very sad for me because as yeah. far as I can tell so far, what I need, you are giving me. Mm-hmm. And they need to hear that from us a lot. They need to, yeah. 
even 30 years later, <laughs> yeah. You, yeah. you're what I need the most. I think you sharing this, us knowing this helps then give a framework to be speaking to something that may have been unconscious that could have been slipped. And so I'm curious, what are some of the other things that we should know about that would help <laughs> mitigate any problems in the future that could have gone under the rug that we didn't notice? Men don't expect to never be emasculated, but depending mm-hmm. on their stage of development, which goes with their age, mm-hmm. they have, they will put up with more or less being emasculated. Men mm. in their 30s will put up with more being emasculated than men in their 40s, which will put up more than men in their 50s, 60s, you know, and as they go through, you know, if, I think you're probably familiar with the stages of development. So pages yeah. and knights, princes and kings and elders and the tunnel in between. We teach it in Keys of the Kingdom, right? And also in the amazing development of men. Um, I'm saying that like it's still a cassette tape. That's funny. <laughs> um, but I think on the flip side of this, Alyssa, is our brains have so much input, so mm-hmm. much input. Even if we have high levels of testosterone, so we're more single focused, which will filter out everything it considers irrelevant, even with diffused awareness, right, which we become overwhelmed because of how much input we have all the time. Mm-hmm. I love the reports in the study where men uh, volunteered to take estrogen. And by three days into the study, they had all quit or begged out because of the amount that they just were like, of information. Hi, ah, how does everyone understand this? <laughs> Noticing everything the way that was, yes. ah, get me yes. out of here. I quit. I'm out of here. No, you can't get me out of here. I remember I went to a workshop you did in early 2000s and and I remember you saying like women walk through the family room and the pillows <laughs> talking to them, like fix uh-huh. me, organize me. And it gave my husband such a different framework. We talked about it later. We weren't together then, but it gave him such a different mindset to understand my brain and mm-hmm. compassion to, to, mm-hmm. it's a, it can, with diffuse awareness, like you say, with women, we are more the gatherers, right? So like we're looking mm-hmm. at all of the different things through evolution it can be overwhelming for somebody that's single focus, like the hunters really focused yeah. in on one thing at a time. Yeah. Imagine having a fulfilling career doing what you love, working from anywhere in the world, setting your own hours while making good money and a big impact. If that lights you up, then I'm super excited to share with you today's sponsor, the Institute for Coaching Mastery. This is my robust accredited year-long certification program for newer seasoned coaches, therapists, leaders, and those just looking to up-level their life in a profound way. We have an amazing community of students from all around the world who have really started their journey to expand with us both personally and professionally. And this experience is designed to give you the three things that you need to thrive. So first, you have all of the tools and support you need to move past what's been holding you back so that you can completely change the trajectory of your life. And then you learn how to masterfully and confidently facilitate transformation with your clients or your team, regardless of your niche. If you want to do health, business, relationship, or you just have no idea yet, we hold your hand through that. And then lastly, you'll receive my six figure and beyond signature roadmap that's customizable to meet you wherever you are. So whether you want to do high ticket sales, online marketing, or you just want to hit six figures without ever needing to go on social media, we've got you covered. And this truly is the most rewarding work in the world. We have new students now who have a wait list of dream clients in under a year. We also have seasoned students who are doing $80,000 months. And this is really about creating lasting transformation from the inside out so that you can share your gifts and serve the world in all the ways that you're called to. And I've seen firsthand the power of what happens when you have the community to collaborate with, but you also have the right tools and resources to really thrive. And so whether you wanna do your own personal development, you're wanting to become a coach, or you're just looking for a cutting edge approach to really grow your business, the Institute for Coaching Mastery is for you you are held every single step of the way. And so if you wanna get behind the scenes access to the Institute with three proven transformational tools for free to help you create the business and life you love, all you have to do is go to alissanobriga.com forward slash tools, 
or you can find us at alissanobriga.com forward slash apply now to see all the details and apply today. Yeah. And it's also what has men think we have eyes in the back of our head. Because <laughs> it's not just what we see. We, we can sense their, their emotions. We can sense their mood. We can sense the feelings they have. We can the level of frustration. We, mm-hmm. we can sense how much energy people have in our environment. Like, mm-hmm. oh, she's tired. <laughs> He's full of beans, right? Like we, we can <laughs> tell. And I think science will figure out how to measure this. I know heart math's been working on it, but someday I think, you know, people just know how much like that we can hear each other's heartbeat, even though we don't know we're hearing each other's heartbeat. Mm-hmm. Um, but the, so in any case, whether we're focused or diffuse awareness, our brains have to filter because there's too yeah. much input. And, and one of the ways that we filter is by, it occurs to us as thinking about, by what are we thinking about while someone's talking? Mm-hmm. And, and if, you know, me, I'm an engineer, so I want to get down to exactly how does it occur that that thinking about occurs usually as a question at the top of our mind, mm-hmm. right? And so default questions for focused people is what's the point? <laughs> what's the problem, <laughs> right? Uh-huh. Um, uh-huh. For, for more open-minded diffuse awareness people, it's what does this have to do with me? Why are you telling me that? <laughs> Why are you telling me that? Um, what do you need from me? From me, 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 me. <laughs> and, and we because we listen with those questions, it's like a treasure hunt. So mm-hmm. our minds are sorting for the answer to that question. And it can end up screening out all the information coming at us. And mm-hmm. so that's why I'm constantly teaching people to pick a different question, generate listening with a better question, like what's true for them? I mean, mm-hmm. if, we, if we listen to each other, what's true for the other person on the telephone before we ever met, we'd have much fewer first dates. <laughs> we just wouldn't mm-hmm. do it because we'd mm-hmm. hear what's true for them isn't going to work for what's true for me. Mm-hmm. And if we were expressing anywhere close to what's true from us for us, the other person would be like, oh, I'm the wrong person for her. And mm-hmm. it's why when I was, all the conversations Dan and I had before we ever met, and this was three and a half years ago, I would say something while thinking in my head, if you're going to run, run now. And mm-hmm. I just kept saying what was true for me. Right? Mm-hmm. Like in the first 15, but like 10 minutes on the phone the first time. So Mm -hmm. I assume Valerie, who introduced us, I assume Valerie told you that I have been widowed. And he said, yes, and I'm very sorry for your loss. And I said, Mm -hmm. thank you. And then I Mm -hmm. (laughs) waited a beat. And it'd be good for you to know that my husband is still very much a part of my life. And he probably Mm -hmm. picked you. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And I'm thinking... (laughs) If you're going to run, run now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like a safety mechanism. Like, the, like, well, just this is, ha- true. this is true for me. And if it doesn't work yeah. for you, yeah. or you think that's that I'm crazy, or, or, like, yeah. I had a man who said to me, that won't work for me. Like, okay. And okay. I should have believed him instead of thinking it would change. <laughs> he, he, like, but but Dan's response was this long silence, and I'm thinking, mm. okay, this might be the end of the conversation. And then yeah. I hear, hmm, I can feel him. Nice energy. Oh, oh. wow. Yeah. Okay, yeah. first hurdle passed, right? And I just mm-hmm. kept doing that what what i know to be true about me that i am not going to change for anybody which is by the way awesome place to get to in life and i couldn't have been there when i was still um fertile 
right? It's a, it's yeah. a, it's a yeah. post menopausal. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> I care so much less about adapting and being wow. pleasing and even having yeah. somebody to spend life with. Right. Um, mm -hmm. I imagine but, that that's also vulnerable, like to, for us to speak our truth of this is my experience and this is what I'm not willing to, this is like my non-negotiables. This is my, mm -hmm. the way I live life to put your heart out like that, I think is vulnerable, but so helpful, so powerful. And I hear that it gets easier when we're, when we're not fertile. <laughs> with, yeah, when we're not fertile and with practice, but also Alyssa, so I did a thing about this. I've been working on deal breakers for ages in sync with opposite sex. Mm -hmm. What do you need to give? What do you need to get? What can't you live with? What can't you live without? You know, understanding love and commitment. What are your, what, what are your minimum requirements? What do people need to be? Mm -hmm. How do they need to behave? And then, and then own your ultimatums is the most recent because interacting with Dan, I realized there were some things that weren't still weren't getting through. And mm -hmm. the thing about our deal breakers are our ultimatums. And people hate mm -hmm. ultimatums because they're usually presented with an ultimatum when the other person thinks we're in love enough or attached enough that we'll mm -hmm. submit. Mm -hmm. And that's what pisses us off. Because mm -hmm. if instead, if we led with our ultimatums, like before we ever meet in person, I'm serious about that. <laughs> okay, yeah. let's Let's check some things before we waste any time, energy, or resources getting together, which mm -hmm. most men will really appreciate unless mm -hmm. they're just physically attracted, in which case mm -hmm. they want to get together as soon as possible because how do I get you in bed over the phone? Mm -hmm. And it's a bad sign. If they won't talk to you ahead of time, then don't go see them at all. <laughs> the yeah. end, yeah. right? If you're listening to the other person, what's true for them, what matters to them, what do they care about, which mm -hmm. you can hear in a man talking about his business, his job, his golf game, <laughs> his, his friendships, the travel he likes, you can hear what they care about. And mm -hmm. like Dan, what he talked about the most <laughs> was his kids. Hmm. He talked about his kids and, and I could, and what was happening with each of the three of them and who they were and where, what they were up to and what they cared about. And, and I could hear it. Oh, his kids are his number one priority. Mm. And mm. okay. But, so he's going to have, he's going to have deal breakers in this area. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> and I even asked him if I insisted on being a higher priority than your kids, would we be together? Mm. He said, no. <laughs> mm -hmm. And I Clear. didn't want to be a higher priority. I was Greg's yeah. first priority in the last like, eight years of his life. Yeah. I didn't have enough for him to do. <laughs> it, was, <laughs> it was horrible. People, women yeah. think they want to be a man's first priority. No, men have too much capacity. They'll drive you <laughs> nuts if you're their first priority. <laughs> mm -hmm. If providing mm -hmm. for you is their first priority and they do most of their providing out there <laughs> and then some <laughs> up close and personal, okay, that'll work. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> one, of, one of the things I, I watched one of your trainings where it was fascinating to me men had no idea that women don't feel safe. What are some other things that we can become more aware of in terms of what women don't understand about men? Just something that we can yeah. bring more awareness to. Yeah. Yeah. Or vice versa. I'll, go, I'll go right down that same thread. It's just so important to see the shock on the men's faces, like to register how much they don't know this about women. For women, you can't separate safety and sexuality. And you, and women oh, are let's always- Let's pause on that. Let's pause on that. That feels so big <laughs> that women can't separate safety from sexuality. Can we unpack a little bit more of that? That feels so big. <laughs> yes. Do you want to go right now or do you want to put a pin in it? 
um, whatever, wherever you want to go, but that just, I, I would just, there, there's, yes, let's talk about that at some point. <laughs> because it goes both ways, right? Mm-hmm. So feeling safe, like I, I asked women, what, what's romantic to you? What do men do that's romantic? And I asked women, what do men do that makes you feel safe? Mm-hmm. And the answers were the same. Oh. They were the same. Like a man um, taking my arm or putting his hand in the middle of my back or small of my back, depending on the relationship when we cross the street. Or mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. all these things that make us feel safe are also the things that are romantic. So like a man sending yeah. you a text in the middle of the day saying, thinking about you, beautiful. Oh, mm-hmm. that connection makes us feel safe. He's thinking about mm-hmm. me. He's keeping track of mm-hmm. me. If a tiger showed up, he'd save me. It's <laughs> also romantic. Like, oh, mm-hmm. I'm going to take my clothes off. <laughs> and so, so it's mostly like that, except, yeah. and a big part of what makes us feel safe is ways that they're like us, like, like that we care mm-hmm. about the same things. Um, mm-hmm. Even that mm-hmm. we prefer the same thing, can, things can be really comforting. Um, we mm-hmm. both take butter on our toast. <laughs> or we, or we both, <laughs> we, neither one of us minds garlic. We, we, it's okay. Eat all the garlic you want. I won't, I won't have a problem with it. I'll let me eat it with you. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Little funny things, you know. Dan had to learn to set the parking brake on his car when he stopped. Because mm. he... He knew when his car had come to complete stop and he'd get out, but I kept getting out, getting my shins knocked by the car rolling back. Oh, yeah. Right. So I started pulling the parking brake, right? And it, but it made me uh-huh. feel so unsafe getting out of the cars. Mm-hmm. Hazardous. And mm-hmm. it, so it can be these little things, right? But they feeling unsafe brings out the worst in women. Mm-hmm. And yeah. men don't know we're constantly monitoring it and how many things set us off. Like men don't know that raising their voice, that to a woman, raise your voice, next you raise your hand. Even if Mm. it's never happened, we still think Mm. that. They don't know that. They don't know Mm. if you just want to stop bringing out the worst in women, quit raising your voice. Mm. (laughs) Take a moment. (laughs) Chill out, walk away, come back. Um, But a huge thing that happens, Alyssa, because women are always pursuing safety, the things that we do to pursue safety often bring out the worst in men. So um, answering your original question. So one of the things yeah. that women don't know is that in a single focus state of mind, in a committed state of mind, where their brain is screening out everything irrelevant to the result they're intent upon, that with the exception of the frustration of not having what they need to produce the result, if they Mm -hmm. have what they need and they're in it, Mm -hmm. besides being a state of focus, a state of commitment, it's a state of peace. Mm -hmm. Men experience peace in being single-focused. So Mm -hmm. when they're focused and we interrupt them to connect, we not only have now interrupted their productivity, which is the source of their safety, we've interrupted Mm. their peace. Mm. I mean, it's terrible for them. Mm -hmm. And since we live in a constant state of interruption by our environment, We don't even know we've interrupted them. We don't even know that the interruption is significant. And we, especially if we think what they're focused on is not important, like a football game or the (laughs) news for the seventh time this week. (laughs) Like, how can that be important? This is the same old news, right? Mm -hmm. But they don't know, you know, who's sitting there is a stallion whose job is to circle the herd looking for danger. And this is how men, men look out, right? Mm -hmm. Women look in for well-being, men look out for danger. 
And so, mm. so what they're focused on, that's all they're doing. And if we assumed if he's focused on it, it's worth being focused on. It's important mm -hmm. to him. So mm -hmm. it doesn't mean we can't interrupt, but the difference between just starting talking as if he were doing nothing yeah, or saying, I'm sorry to interrupt. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm sorry to interrupt. Can I ask a quick question? I'm sorry to interrupt. Can we connect for a moment? I'm sorry to interrupt. Yeah. When would be a good time to connect? Like if you can't not interrupt, just the respect mm -hmm. of what you're doing is valid. Yeah. I'm sorry to interrupt. Yeah. It changes, it softens. Mm -hmm. And and sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes they'll say, then don't. <laughs> <laughs> and just like, got it. Too late. Yeah. Come to yeah. me when you're ready and just leave. Mm -hmm. Like we could get mm -hmm. all bent about it, but mm -hmm. whatever he was doing in that moment was critical <laughs> and mm -hmm. unrecoverable to him. He doesn't mm -hmm. mean to be mean. Mm -hmm. But we often have it, to have signals, right? Especially people working at home. A closed door means don't interrupt. An mm -hmm. open door means I'm interruptible. Something mm -hmm. as simple mm -hmm. as that. Yeah. It feels like you're giving a framework to have more compassion to understand ourselves and each other so that we can offer the grace to say, sorry to interrupt, or when would be a good time to connect versus assuming that they're just like us, right? Mm -hmm. And nobody really is like, just like us. So that's mm -hmm. a great framework to hold in conversation yes. and in relationship. Is there something you want to share on the opposite in the sense where that, that men often get wrong about women that can help <laughs> <laughs> become more aware? <laughs> well you think that because they hate to be interrupted that they wouldn't interrupt us mm -hmm. um because well first of all women pay attention to reciprocity that mm. what i give you you'll give me i listen to you for a half hour you listen to me for a half hour mm -hmm. no that's not how men appreciate they don't appreciate okay. reciprocity, which is why we can't teach them what to do for us by doing it for them. Um, uh -huh. <laughs> men appreciate by taking and using. You know, they appreciate the sandwich because they ate it. They know, to, uh -huh. you know they appreciated being listened to because they kept talking. <laughs> 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 so, okay. yeah. And so, oh, it's so funny. Um, so man is so focused on what he's working on and if including producing that result is getting information from you or telling mm. you something, he will walk into wherever you are talking. <laughs> Just walk in talking. And I I asked I asked Greg once, when you start talking, do you expect me to start listening? <laughs> And he said, of course, I'm talking. <laughs> and then men get hurt because they're talking and we're trying to listen, but the teapot is talking louder and has to uh -huh. be turned off, right? Mm -hmm. Or the phone rang or a child came in and needed something and mm -hmm. they're talking. And they think by our state of interruption, right, that we're responding to, we're not ignoring it, that we're saying all those things are more important than him and what he has to say. Uh, and uh -huh. they get deeply, deeply hurt. They can be crushed mm. by it. Mm. And or just aggravated because they needed that bit of information to keep doing what they're doing. But when mm -hmm. they want to share themselves with us and we're all kinds of distracted, it really hurts. And yeah. so I have to teach men, and we do this in understanding women, how to get and keep a woman's attention, mm -hmm. like to take the time to do that. And either something mm -hmm. important I want to talk to you about. Is there anything in your environment you need? To to do something about, to be able to listen to me mm -hmm. <laughs> and she'll mm -hmm. look around and go, 
okay, I need seven minutes. <laughs> and yeah, then I yeah, say, yeah. come back in seven minutes or sit there quietly for seven minutes, which is a good mm-hmm. idea because if you leave, she isn't going to keep track of the seven minutes and she'll think of five more things that have to be done. Right? Yeah, I don't, I don't. <laughs> so just sit there and wait and she'll do the things. And then we, we teach men to touch her. If you touch her, mm-hmm. you become the loudest thing in her environment. So hold uh-huh. her hand while you're telling her that important thing. Just uh-huh. keep holding your hand. Don't let go. <laughs> and we teach us about sex too. Like be like a great masseuse who yes. you know, always keeps a hand on you. Get some more lotion with one hand, but <laughs> it doesn't walk away. Right? They uh-huh. keep yes. So yep. Yeah, do you you stop touching a woman in the middle of sex and you should repaint this scene. She's off doing something else. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> More down with this. What am I? Oh yeah, I'm gonna do the dishes next. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and it's so compassionate, just biologically, like how we've been wired over time. It's just so helpful to know these things. And I I well, love that your work has been devoted and, to telling people. Yeah, and the hormones do it and you know the thing on youtube when does gender matter right it's on our youtube Mm -hmm. channel i did it for instagram it just matters because of the hormones that come with the gender organs right Mm -hmm. that Mm -hmm. testicles make testosterone (laughs) Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. (laughs) the eggs inside the ovaries are the source of almost all of our estrogen and half of our testosterone Mm -hmm. and the other half comes from our adrenal glands Mm -hmm. when we hit menopause and the eggs are spent (laughs) we have to do things to hang on to estrogen which is stored in a woman's body fat so if yeah. we get too thin, we can't store estrogen from the things that we consume when or our body's mm-hmm. ability to make what it can at that point. And our skin mm-hmm. will get papery, right? It gets, mm-hmm. it's, it, it mm-hmm. just gets papery. It doesn't glow anymore. There's, there's no mm-hmm. radiance that happens anymore. And, mm-hmm. and then if we keep thinking we can produce results the way we did before, but now all of the testosterone, which is all about the results, is coming <laughs> from our adrenal glands. And, mm. and so we can end up with adrenal burnout if we're trying to do what we used to do without yeah. resting enough, which rest is one of the things yeah. that builds testosterone. This happens to okay. men too, by the way. They think they can get mm-hmm. by in those four hours of sleep like they did in their 30s. And mm-hmm. the consequence is they don't have erections anymore. Because they're not mm. resting enough to build the testosterone mm. that makes woodies. So, yeah. and they take it personally, like there's something wrong with them. Yeah. No, they just need more rest. <laughs> yeah. And a man Good shout know. at me across the pool complex <laughs> at a hotel <laughs> from the jacuzzi. <gasps> Thank you, Alison. <laughs> <laughs> All he done is start sleeping more and mm. no more blue pills. Mm. No more psychological, right. oh, what's wrong with me? Nah, nah, nah. Yeah. No, no more yeah. of that. So, Bless. Yeah. I mean, this is just where, to, to, besides prejudice, which I, yeah, yeah, it's one of my biggest mm-hmm. things I'm working on these days prejudice and discrimination and objectification and competition and all the monsters of humanity. Um, yeah. Yeah. Paying attention to gender, it just, it's not as important as paying attention to each other. Like watch, mm-hmm. watch the assumptions. We have to really watch mm-hmm. the assumptions. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And, and listen to what matters to this person. Right. Rather than this, you. Yeah. You know, this woman. But the mm-hmm. hormones matter. Hormones create mm-hmm. thinking and thinking literally creates hormones. It's a cycle. Yeah. And... Mm-hmm. Can I mention a thing about that that most people don't know? Yeah, yeah. Let's talk about it. Um, my a dear friend of mine, who's also a, a chiropractor and cranial sacral and um, Chinese medicine. I mean, she's she's just a genius, 
and she literally mm -hmm. sees inside your body. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> she just looks and she sees what's going on in there. And so she taught me about something called the progillian steel. That steel as an mm -hmm. S-T-E-A-L. So the mm -hmm. progillian gland is attached to the adrenal gland. And mm -hmm. the adrenal gland will make the testosterone, right? Which is the hormone of focus and ambition and sex drive and short-term memory. So it does that in Wahoo, right? But if mentally we're stressed, we're anxious, we're worried, right? Mm -hmm. So if we're, there's something to be done and we're like, oh God, how am I ever going to get this done? Versus there's something to be done. Yes, let me add it. Yes, mm -hmm. let me add it. Testosterone dumps into the bloodstream and you mm -hmm. go, girl, right? Mm -hmm. If we're like, oh God, how am I ever going to get this done? Then the progillian gland takes the testosterone and converts it to cortisol. Yeah. Cortisol, which exacerbates the anxiety and makes us tired, right? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. it creates belly fat because it's not going on an adventure, it's going to war. So we've got to mm -hmm. store, we've got to store energy <laughs> to be able to deal with this upcoming thing. And it's all mental state. Just like, yeah. what's fun about this? I have a principle, mm -hmm. I have fun doing everything. <laughs> Good for you. Good for you. Yeah. yeah. What's fun about keeps, this? I like that. It keeps me in this state of mind that gives yeah. me access to the hormones in a good way instead of setting mm -hmm. me up to cause them to go catty bypass. Yeah. All of this so helpful. Just oh, as soon as we have the information, then we can do something with it. And by the way, the thing I said about safety and sexuality and being inseparable, except if there isn't something about this person that is a little dangerous, <laughs> like they're bigger than me, they're stronger than me, they're more intense mm -hmm. than me, they're more sensitive than me, some strength that we see in them, if there isn't mm -hmm. that, then there won't be chemistry. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. So this safety allows us to be receptive and participate in a more satisfying and fulfilling way. But if there isn't that little bit of distinction, then we won't have the excitement. And that's why yeah. I encourage women, we literally, and I talk about this in Dating with Distinctions, we literally can cause chemistry. So we can start with men we really like, we really connect with, we love who we are with them, and then go looking for how is he stronger than me? And mm -hmm. I like it. <laughs> mm -hmm. You do that, uh -huh. you'll have chemistry and you can cause it whenever you want. Amazing. Yeah. Yeah. As a couple therapist, people would ask me all the time, can you actually have chemistry? Can you build that? What I'm hearing you say is 100%. Yeah. So one of the things I've come to recognize in the last few years is how incredibly guided I have been my entire life. And I mm -hmm. didn't know it. There were times when I um, was aware of because I asked. <laughs> and I ask mm -hmm. and I ask in a very intentional way. And I am guided. I am giving important information, like mm -hmm. a complete plan for how to publish the Queen's Code for the mm -hmm. widest possible distribution. Follow mm -hmm. the plan. We were in 70 countries in three weeks. Right? Like, oh. So mm -hmm. that way, but also that I've always been guided by questions popping in my head. They just pop mm -hmm. in my head. The, and when I found out I was bringing out the worst in men, the, que the question that popped in my head was, what if men are responding to women? And mm -hmm. one of the key ways that men are responding to women is sexual attraction. Mm -hmm. So while we can cause chemistry for ourselves by looking for strength in them, looking for differences in them that we like, right? Mm -hmm. We can cause chemistry in ourselves. If they don't have a chemical response to type, right? They all have a type that they, they mm -hmm. didn't invent. They're, it's just their type. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> and it's so cute, the variety of type, right? Like mm -hmm. 
I've had men wax poetic about tummies. <laughs> just, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Poochie, poochie, poochie. <laughs> We're all trying to get rid of it, right? And, uh-huh. But if it doesn't fall into type, which is even the least of it, a woman's sexual energy and a woman's sensuality, meaning how much is she paying attention to the pleasure of her senses, mm. that will cause chemistry in a man. Huh. So, so our connection to our own physical being is what causes a physical response in them. And if we're wow. disconnected from our bodies because... Mm-hmm which is normal, right? Mm-hmm. We have so many judgments about them and mm-hmm. that causes us to disconnect and we're not slowing down enough, like slowing down enough to pay attention to taste, to smell, to sounds, to beauty, right? What mm-hmm. we're seeing, mm-hmm. to, to feeling what we're feeling while we're feeling it. And it, mm-hmm. and it, like touching a man where we're paying attention to what we're feeling. So the sensuality yeah. of touching them. Oh my gosh. I mean, mm. we have so much more to do with a man's interest and, and potency, if you will, is his response. We have so much more to do with it. So mm-hmm. There's all these things that we think are out of our control, right? Like we think chemistry is out of our control, ours for them, theirs for ours. No, Um, Mm -hmm. we think love is out of our control. It happens or it doesn't. No, no, your brain's going to filter. You can have your brain filter what will cause you to have bigger feelings of love for people. Beautiful. So empowering. Yeah, so empowering. You describe um, a queen as several things, but one of them that really shocked me and I want to hear more about is the, um, the capacity to receive. Because as women, so much of our, through society and culture, we're taught to be selfish or be selfless. And it can even seem selfish to receive. And yeah. so I just love to hear how you support women in receiving because it obviously as she receives so does the entire environment. It sounds like we affect each other in that way. If everyone just thinks about what it is, think of something that you need to give, that you need to give. Mm -hmm. It's part of who you are to give Mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. And then just think of a time when you needed to give that and the person you needed to give it to wouldn't let you. Mm -hmm. They just wouldn't either because they didn't value what you're offering and it didn't mean anything to them, or they were busy proving that they can do everything themselves, Mm -hmm. (laughs) right? Or who, or they had some, you know, very primitive and common status reaction. Who are you to give to me? Right. Mm -hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. Yeah. It helps people that I was married for 26 years and with Greg from 28. So what I say about marriage and creating the marriages that people want, which, you know, yeah. almost all of my curriculum was built during that until he died five years ago. And, and it's a little tricky for people that I'm single and I'm committed to staying single <laughs> Not single, mm-hmm. like uncoupled, but I'm not getting married again. As in, I'm mm-hmm. not giving up the right to walk away. I will not mm-hmm. do till death do his part. <laughs> mm-hmm. I will be here mm-hmm. for as long as I can give you what you need and you can give me what I need and we're happy doing it. <laughs> mm-hmm. When mm-hmm. that isn't true anymore, out of love, we will not hold each other <laughs> yeah. To, yeah. to staying at something that disempowers us. So, yeah. so if you just think about how painful it is to not get to give what's yours to give, then you can imagine the other side. The more a man loves you, the more he cares about you, the more he's emotionally, intellectually, spiritually connected to you, the more he's compelled to give to you. Mm-hmm. And 
receptivity is the the fourth and essential most attractive quality in a woman. Because if she's got the other three, he just wants to give and give and give. And if she's not receptive to who he is, to what he offers, that doesn't mean you have to take it all. We get to have boundaries. But Mm -hmm. if we won't receive it, they're crushed. They're like, she doesn't need what I've got. I'll go find Mm -hmm. someone who does. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because, I mean, Greg called it the, the, the great trick. Because he was being all Teflon about something I was trying to give to him. I was trying to take care of him. And I yelled at him, do you think you're the only person in this relationship who needs to give? Uh, And he just like stopped in his tracks. And I mean, his mind worked so fast. He said, wait a second. Are you saying if I let you give to me, I would be providing for you <laughs> bingo so he could, he couldn't receive to receive but he mm-hmm. could receive in order to provide for me mm-hmm. he could receive to give mm-hmm. and Beautiful. and that thing you know to give is to receive mm-hmm. it, it's a spiral yeah you, yeah you know and so yeah, so if you just think, and then like um, Karen in the Queen's Code and Kimberly in the Queen's Code, well, Karen had happened in Keys of the Kingdom, Kimberly, char- main character in the Queen's Code, noticing that when, after she gave up emasculating men, they just started offering to do all these things for her. And when she said no, it took her a while to realize that she was looking for the telltale signs of relief that would happen in a woman when it was a false offer, like we offer to get credit for the offer, but we're hoping they'll say no. <laughs> and then mm-hmm. we're like, when they say no, so now we got credit, but we don't have to do it. <laughs> but the men weren't reacting that way. That mm-hmm. that they, when she said no, they were authentically bummed. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, I don't get to do that for her. Mm-hmm. And so she mm-hmm. wisely made the decision, I need to, I need to come up with some stuff that they can give me. She didn't decide, mm-hmm. okay, I'm going to pretend I need that or I pretend mm-hmm. I want that. No, I need to come up with some legitimate things I can provide so that yeah. she can legitimately receive and appreciate. Mm-hmm. It's a huge area and it's so hard yeah. for human beings. Yeah. Yeah. It's not yeah. personal. <laughs> yeah. And it's helpful to know these things, to offer ourselves compassion and grace, and mm-hmm. then to give each other an understanding about how yeah. we can then move through some of the barriers that we have. Yeah. And yeah, you, and you I, just I give like, warning though, Alyssa, yeah. sorry. Sure. So when I started studying men in 1991, I quickly found out that I had to start expanding my ability to receive. And the first thing mm-hmm. I had to do was stop proving I could do everything myself. Yeah. I smiled real so, big when you said that. Yeah. Well, so now here we are 33 years later. And in that entire time, however much I expand my ability to receive, men still challenge by their ability to give. Wow. And that exists to this day. Mm. (laughs) Over the weekend, I was realizing, oh, gosh, I have to expand even more than I've already expanded mm-hmm. for 33 years. Mm-hmm. So it's it's a journey. It's not, okay, now I'm good at receiving. It's yeah. a journey because- Thank you for sharing that. I mean, whether it's men or women or children or a benevolent universe, oh my gosh. It, providence, there's a reason they call it providence. Mm-hmm. Provide. <laughs> mm, mm, mm. yeah it, it mm-hmm. might be the biggest thing for all of us to do expand our ability to receive what a gift i'm up for the challenge what a gift thank you allison yeah. <laughs> yeah, if you do that it's a gift to everyone around you because they'll get to give yeah. more they'll get to express more they all get to know themselves in a mm-hmm. in an expanded way mm-hmm mm-hmm is there anything just in closing that you want to make sure you share here today that would be a value to just people listening, looking for 
just clarity and guidance? Um, well, I know in the days when you first encountered me, yeah, we had women always done, start with understanding men. Mm-hmm. And we don't anymore because mm-hmm. we learned how much women will contort themselves to adapt to what they learn about men. And that if we don't honor ourselves first, mm-hmm. all is lost is the way I say it. Honor yourself first or all is lost because we each have a thousand, thousands of times more information about ourselves than another person. And if we're not mm-hmm. honoring the information we have about ourselves, we can't model for others how to respect us, how to love us, how to take care of us. What I mm-hmm. learned fits for most men and most women. And, mm-hmm. and so it's, it's illuminating in so many ways, but it helps women to see the good reasons for what we do. So we stopped, we stopped having to pretend we're not doing it or hiding we're not doing it. Or it, the, to me, the biggest thing is we don't let people criticize us anymore. Mm. <laughs> for mm. being female, for being affected yeah. by estrogen, like mm-hmm. like you're so scattered, like you don't get mm-hmm. to call me that. You want yeah. you want this the curves and the rosy cheeks and all this yum <laughs> yum over here. It comes with diffuse awareness. Estrogen yeah. makes all that, and it does this to my brain, and I don't mm-hmm. choose to be scattered. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. (laughs) so you're you're going to support me and not cause me to be more scattered by all the pressure you're putting on me (laughs) (laughs) but you don't you don't know i don't accept that criticism which women collapse under that criticism just fold yeah or you're too sensitive no i'm not i'm perfectly sensitive i I made this way Right? Or, right? Why do you make such a big deal out of your feelings? You know, the like man says, mm-hmm. why, do make, why do women make feelings the center of everything? Well, if you look at us physically, be, because they are. <laughs> <laughs> They're right yeah. here. Men's uh-huh. feelings are right here. They are right here. They're in different parts of their body. <laughs> uh-huh. So like, uh-huh. why do you make it the center of everything? We think. Oh, you're cut off from your feelings. No, they're not. Mm-hmm. They're just in different parts of their bodies. Mm-hmm. And they've been, mm-hmm. yeah. Anyhow, it's a whole other conversation. I could go on for days, as you know. Yeah. Yeah. And share with <laughs> us, because I know people are going to want to stay connected. Where where do they find your work? Um, AllisonArmstrong.com is the best mm-hmm. place. That's where everything I've created since like 2006 is on our mm-hmm. website. Beautiful. Allison, thank you for your heart, your humor, just the body of work that you've done. I know that it's impacted myself and that it will Mm -hmm. deeply impact my audience. So thank you for who you are in the world and for being here. You're you're welcome. You're very welcome. Thanks Mm -hmm. for letting me do this. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Bless you. Thank you so much for doing this work that changes the world, starting with yourself. It truly does make a difference. And if you're finding value in this podcast, a cost-free way to support us is by leaving an up to five-star review. It does mean the world to us. And as a thank you gift, we're going to send you one of the most powerful tools that you will ever discover. You're going to get behind the scenes access, showing you how to live into your full potential without letting fear hold you back from stepping into your dreams. Just head over to Apple Podcast or Spotify and leave a review now. You can take a screenshot before hitting submit and then go to alissanobriga.com forward slash podcast to upload it. And make sure to have your automatic downloads turned on wherever you listen so you don't miss any of the upcoming episodes. I have so much magic I can't wait to share with you. And you can find all this information in the show notes below. But lastly, if you're on Instagram, I love connecting and hearing from you. So come on over and say hello. I'm at alissanobriga. Thank you again for being here. I cannot wait to share more with you.